So this is the second bag sort for the bottom border pack, and we are going to be doing blocks six through nine from bag number two. And so a lot of the triangles we work out of the booklet. I wrote in the book when I did my first bag to make sure that I knew which blocks were EPP modified. In the triangles, most of them have been modified to some degree or another. Not all of them, but most of them. So block six is modified from this. And just to give it the right thing, we've, they've changed the tip a little bit and even this out. So I'm gonna take my block six booklet picture and I'm gonna dump out my bag. And my bag contains all the pieces for all of these, and there's a lot of tiny pieces in these bags. So I'm having issues getting some of these little biggies out. There we go. <clears throat> so I've got my baggies and my block labels ready to go near me. And then it's a matter, as I pull these out, I will sort them in piles even if, if they're not associated with this block. So this block obviously is, has that piece. I'm assuming that this is this piece. There's another matching one, which seems to be right here. The problem's going to come in when I need to find the triangles because within the triangles are usually a lot of other triangles. So it's a matter of being able to find the exactly the exact right ones. So I'm going to set, there's a lot of strange shapes in these triangles, like this is not straight. So I'm going to go through here and find these triangles the exact right size, because when it's in the booklet, it's the right size picture. Occasionally, when you're in the book, it's not exactly to the size, but close. So as I go through here to find my pieces, I will make sure that I verify it with the shape it's on. All right, now I found one of the corners up here, and there's a little bit of a cautionary tale. There is a, there is a front and a back to this. So if I put this in here, this line, in regards to this line, actually goes up very slightly on an incline because it's upside down. So if I flip it right side up, it fits at the right line, and it's really hard to see. So that makes this line completely straight. This is the reason I write on every single piece, because that way I know that's the back. Yes, essentially you're creating a mirror image of what's on the page, but you know that you're doing front to back and left to right. You don't have to worry about which side is which when you go to put it on the block because mirror image pieces creates a lot of drama. So I found um, this triangle and I have a second one that I'm using over on my table so I can measure the other pieces as I find them against something. So I'm assuming that this is my other triangle and it's gonna have the same issue as the first one. And let's see which side I've got here if I can get this exactly where it needs to be. This is the other reason why my stiletto is so handy is because I can put it exactly where it needs to be where my big fat finger isn't gonna cut it. So that has a slight incline, but it looks pretty good, but I'm gonna check the other side anyway just to verify that I've got it the correct way because it's a very slight difference. And as I can tell, this does, this does incline up here if I flip it over. So I had it right the first time. And I'm going to number my pieces before I'm done. So that way I know the difference. Because if I put this one with this side up over here accidentally, it's going to be wrong. So I'm going to number these so that I know exactly where they go. And then it's not going to matter which or how I put them in the baggie that way. So I'm just going to continue to sift through these and look for my pieces. So I found all my pieces for my bottom border six triangle. This is the 
diamond that goes in inside of the tip piece. So I'm going to label these, and I label these BR, bottom row. The bag says BB, whatever you want to do. I just have gotten used to the BR notation from another project. So I'm going to go through and label each one of these. And when I'm done with that, I'll be ready to put my red dots on my focus fabric. So I've labeled all my pieces with the BR6, and this is my picture of my block. And so I'm going to notate what is focus fabric and what is background. Actually, I'm not going to notate the background. I'm going to just put a red dot on what is focus fabric. So this tip is on, this is a background piece, so therefore this diamond on top is going to be a focus fabric. This big piece is focus fabric and then all the inside triangles are as well. So the ones that are touching this big long strip of background and it looks like I got a little carried away with my labeling so stuff got tucked under which is one of those things that happens. So I got that one and that one and that one and that one and these end pieces these little tiny ones and these little tiny ones are background as well so those are my focus fabric pieces and then I'm going to check to see if I need to notate directional and this is my fabric and it doesn't seem to have a direction on it even though it's kind of swirly but I don't I'm not going to label this for direction because I don't think it's needed so I'm going to go ahead and bag this up, and I use bigger bags that fit a finished triangle. This bag will fit. It's about the size of bags that the row packs come in is what I use. And I will be putting my pieces and my fabric in that bag to do my Brock prep. And I'll be moving on to the next block. So I'm on to BR7. And this says that it's a modified block, but the booklet's out of order. So 8 comes before 7 in the book. So this is 7. I'm going to get this one out. And I just remembered after I bagged up my BR6 triangle pieces that I didn't number them. So what I'm going to have to do is when I go to do my block prep and put them on the fabric, I'm going to have to relay it out on my booklet and number them and then I'll be able to put them on the fabric and the reason that matters is because I need to make sure which one is which and it's a lot easier to do before you put it on the fabric than it is to do after the fact especially with that little weirdness in the upper corners or the bottom corners but the big wide part corners <clears throat> excuse me so on to piece number seven and I'm going to have to go through these triangles. These triangles appear to be the same size. They may not be. This one appears to be the same size as this. These appear to be the same size, but they may not be. And so I'm going to measure each one of these pieces very carefully. Again, this is actual size of the pieces because it's a paper pieces diagram. And I will lay it out and see how I'm doing here. So I've got all of my number seven triangle pieces found. All of these are right angle triangles, all of the same size. So you've got four of the same size triangles here. You've got six, no, seven of the same size triangles here. They're not right angles. They're not right triangles, but they are all the same size. And then these are very unique shapes, and so are these. And then you've got elongated right triangles in the corner. So it wasn't that much difficulty finding the ones I needed once I used those criteria. So I will get to labeling these with BR7, and then I'll be ready to label for my focus fabrics. So I've got them labeled with BR7, and I'm going to now label my focus fabrics. So based on this diagram, which is a little difficult to tell, all right, so these pieces here are definitely focus fabric. This piece here is focus fabric, which means the one that just went flying is background. And then this and this and this is focus fabric. And then those 
Now, the trick comes here. It looks like that's all the fabric, but I think this middle part is background, so that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do these three pieces as focus fabric, and then the tip as focus fabric, because that makes sense. That way you can see the background versus the focus fabric pieces. Now, I don't know what my fabric is, so I'm going to label these not only for direction, but also I'm going to number them. So I'm going to start from the bottom and work my, or the tip and work my way up, however you want to diagnose this. So I'm going to put my arrow direction is this way, in case I forget, and this is number one. And as I do this, I'm going to number the, this. So this is going to be two, and again I label this in ballpoint pen because it's different material than I use to mark BR7, which is a Sharpie, and the reason is is because I want to make sure that it doesn't blend together. So this is up, and this is four, four, up, up, five, five. It doesn't matter which one gets what number, it doesn't matter if you do numbers, letters, Greek alphabet, symbols, whatever, as long as whatever you put on this piece corresponds what you write on the paper. I'm just going to get through this and then I'm going to bag them in my baggie. So on to BR8, also an EPP modified block. And I was here in my booklet, but I have to go backwards one to get to eight because they are out of order, no big deal. And so this is my block. I'm going to work this way though just because it's easier for me to do it the way it was written for some reason. I always feel like I'm doing something wrong if I do it upside down. So it's just a matter of being able to find the right pieces and putting the right sizes in the right spot. So I will get going on that. So I've got all of my eight triangle pieces found. There's three triangles right here. They're right triangles with equal sides. And there's three of them right here that are all the same side, all the same size, excuse me. And then these four are the same piece. These are mirror images. There's a lot of mirror images of each other. These two seem to be the exact same size. I didn't try to switch them. There's five triangles here that are slightly larger than the obtuse triangles in the other block. I think that was number six that we did. So there's a lot of curved pieces left. So if it doesn't have a curve, it probably goes in number eight because I'm assuming number nine is where all these curves go because there's only one block left. So I'm going to mark these BR8 and then I'll be ready to mark my focus fabrics. All right, so these are all BR8 on them, and now my focus fabric, so I've got three triangles on the bottom here, so that's the ones that touch the bottom, one, two, three, and then it looks like this guy is focus fabric, and then these pieces, and these pieces, the square is not these pieces are and that leaves these two hmm the tip is not although it could be but I'll leave it alone so we have these two little tiny things here this is background these pointed ones are focus fabric. These other pointed ones are focus fabric. And then this guy, because I'm working backwards here, this guy and then these three on the bottom are focus fabric. And again, I don't know, I don't know which one is my fabric for this block, so I am going to label it for direction. 
and I'm going to number it as well. And I number every piece. I only label the ones for direction that are focus fabric. So this is two, three, four. And I labeled my number three with an arrow. Five. And then an arrow here with a six and a seven. This is the other reason why I use a very fine tip Sharpie. I think they call it ultra fine tip or something. So that I can get a lot of information on a tiny piece. Yes, this is an ultra fine point Sharpie. So I will go through here and finish marking my direction and numbering my pieces. And then I will bag this up and move on to the final block for this bag. Now we're up to the final block for this bag, which is the BR9 block, and it's modified once again, and what they've done is they've taken these points and brought them all the way down to make a single piece here, and then instead of having this look like the top of a heart, this is a single curve. So it's a matter of being able to find the pieces, but before I find the pieces, there's a note in the booklet for assembly, and Apparently, when they made this piece, when the paper pieces folks made this piece, and I've had this happen to me on other triangles, because they did not find the center each time, they had it where it was like a tipping over Christmas tree. And so this was not the right angle on each side. So what they suggest is when you are attaching the curve, the the inside curve to the outside curve, which is like the little Pac-Man piece, they folded the pieces right side together and marked this middle on both the little Pac-Man piece and the outer part, and then she whip-stitched from the middle out and the middle out because this is a curve. And what's, because the reason that's necessary is if you look at this piece, you have a spot where you can tell it's a different, you know, a different line. It goes from circle to line. And that's where, I'm assuming it's this piece, that's where this piece is going to connect. But you're not going to be able to see that under your fabric. So once this is put on fabric, you're not going to be able to, to see that. And marking it with a pencil on the paper itself is not going to do you much good either. I am going to mark it either way with a, with a dot of Sharpie just because that way I remember to do this. But it's real easy to get this tipping effect if you don't have these curves correct on the flat. So that's why this is, is because it's not that these units were off center as much as it's that these curves were not centered correctly on the curve itself. So when this little Pac-Man piece was made, this was off-center, and then the next one was off-center, and so on, and that's why you ended up getting this tipping piece. So thank you, Paper Pieces, for that lovely little tip. And now it's a matter of finding the pieces, which I have this one already here. And I'm assuming that this is the big piece that goes down here. Again, right hand, left hand pieces are a problem, but once you write on them, you've assigned that to be the back, and then you number them, and all that. So I will get started laying out my pieces. So I've got all my BR9 pieces laid out, and I'm going to now label them as BR9, and then I will be ready to label them for the focus fabric. What I will do in addition to that is I'm going to mark actually I'm going to do that I will do that as I pull them off. I'm going to mark the little spots where the curves end at the edge but I'll do that when I'm done with the focus fabric and I go to number them. So now I'm ready to label my focus fabric which in this case are the little Pac-Man sides I guess if this is his mouth, then this is the Pac-Man part. So each side of this little pie piece is going to be the focus fabric and not this outside curve section. 
and then this guy. So, <clears throat> now that I've done that, and I, again, I don't know what my fabric is for this, so I'm going to mark it for directional. And then I'm going to number them. And then after I'm done numbering, or as I number, because as I number, I take them off. So, these are all... And then arrow direction goes on here, just in case I have issues. All right, so this is gonna be number one, and so on. When I get to this piece, I'm gonna label this number two, I'm gonna label this here, but I'm gonna take my Sharpie, I guess, and I'm gonna make a little line to where that is meeting because I don't know if it's going to make a difference later or not but I might as well label them now while I have the advantage so yeah so this is three and then when I get to four five and six I'm going to take my sharpie and label this little wrinkle right here that is my thing and then this one you, it's where this thing changes from a line to a curve if you look at this real close this is the curve and then this is the line so that means I have these in opposite sides so no that means one of these is flipped over this is the line and this is the curve of this one. So this one's correct. This one is not. So I have to flip this over and put the line. Yeah. Okay. Well, isn't this fun? So in this case, I am going to scribble this out and flip this over. So I'm going to have to check the rest of my pieces as well to make sure that I didn't flip those the wrong way. Oh, there's a wrong way. Now I know. BR9. And then I'm going to mark this spot. And then I've got a red dot for my focus fabric. And then I've got an arrow right here. And then this is number six. So this is five. And then four and six. So you can correct a mistake once, but a second time you're going to have to probably get a new piece because you write on it all over the place. So BR9, this would be number seven. Oops, I don't think that's a good idea to put it where my sleeve is sliding on them. All right, so then this, I think that's the only one that you can easy, easily make the mistake. This one's correct. And this one's got the row, the straight here. So I've got 8, 9, and 10. 8, 9, and 10. And this is 11. 11. And I didn't mark nine, 8, and nine, 8 and 10. Excuse me. So this is going to be right here. And then I will cover in my assembly video of BR9, whether or not this was pointless or not. We'll have to see. I'm still going to use the recommended paper piecing, paper pieces technique to make sure I find the middle and get it in the right location. But I'm just going to try this. It's easier to try stuff out and label it now. So what do I say? I say... It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So I might as well do everything now while it's out and laid out and easy to do. Because otherwise I'd have to relay all this out before I put it on my fabric so I could see all this stuff. So this one's a little harder to see. The straight and then the curve. So that's about right there. And then this one right here those aside and then 
ballpoint pen, 15, and then 15 here, and this is 16, 17, and 18. 17 can go away, 16, 17, and 18. And then my Sharpie one last time. These are easy to see. One here and one here. So we'll see if that does any good when I go to assemble this block. But for now, I am all done with my BR6 through BR9 bag sort.